And we're back. We're back. We're back. Don't pay the ransom. I'm alive and well. How you guys doing? Nice to see you all. Uh, welcome back for the afternoon session, last hour of today's trading day. And uh, yeah, I'm noticing uh, noticing uh, news out of uh, Amazon uh, hour of today's trading talking day. Talking about ten thousand layoffs uh, from uh, the Amazon side of things. Also noticing. Um, a news uh it's not directly from uh apple it's more of a indirectly uh, through through analysts who are observing apple's um i14 I, the phone the iphone 14 sales numbers i guess that's the way you say it. apparently um uh, more of a of a pullback on sales on apple iphones apparently and there's a uh, larger a larger pullback than maybe has been discussed or admitted to or however you want to however you want to say that um interesting uh we'll hear more about that again i i tell you kids uh, um we have only just touched the tip of the iceberg when it comes to um revelations of information uh, we're going to be a lot is going to be revealed to us uh, like um, fourth quarter financial results weaker than expected or will be reduced already in advance of them coming when they come out three months from now. Um, 2023 projections will be pulled back all over the place. Um, you're going to have the GDP guesstimates for certain countries will be reduced. Uh, the, world, uh, the world economy as a whole uh, the amount of oil needed on a daily basis might be lighter. Um, we're going to get uh, a lot of information right down to company information. So um, some people will say, oh, well, you know, get the bad news out of the way and then the markets can go up again. Well, markets go up when the perception of the investors out there is that markets, you know, companies that you know, make up the shares of these markets are making more money, are going to make more money, are going to, um, um, tr you know, produce higher earnings per share. Now, you can either make more money per share by making more money, or you can reduce the number of shares outstanding by buying back your stock, um, or you can make more money by buying another company, absorbing it into your company, and the two combined are worth more money down the road. I mean, there's only a few ways to engineer more profits uh, but if the if the consumer the end consumer that buys a company's product doesn't buy as many of the products or doesn't pay the increased price for the product um, or the company has to reduce the prices to enhance and encourage sales in other words reduce margins stocks go down uh, th this this is where the pe multiple doesn't increase on uh, it doesn't get better for the stock or lower for the stock it gets worse which means it goes higher and that means the stock is overpriced that's what we're watching for and uh, you know the dow is up 110 today and you could say oh wow this is great we have another up day going yeah you could you could play that angle but I would say Thursday we gained 1,200. Friday we gained 30. Right now we're up 109 points. Why aren't we up 500 points a day right now? This is a 33,800 point index. Being up 100 is one third of a percentage point. This can be eliminated in 30 seconds on a sell off. I mean, we could be down 2,000 points in one session without any real serious reason i mean we can we can lose points um not that i'm expecting this to happen any minute but i don't see the markets to showing me that they're just stronger across the board there's money coming in from every corner of the economy every investor is borrowing money to buy stock not happening um we're up six on the s p we're up one point on nasdaq we're we're it's a nothing burger here we're, we're on the precipice of a down dip now is the down dip today in the last hour of the day or is it starting tomorrow the day after tomorrow the day after that when do we have it i i think there's a slump coming oil today showed its hand uh, down 360 a barrel 85 dollars 36 cents um the optimism in the stock market is not being reflected in the reality of the crude oil market the crude oil market 
is uh, finding that uh, its end clients don't need as much crude as maybe they thought they did. Over in the OPEC right now, this morning, they already said it. They're cutting production even more. They, they have to cut back production because they can't sell the oil. They can't. You can't you can't force a company or a country to take container ships of oil just because you're sending them over there. No. And they don't do it that way. They don't put oil out to sea and send it off to China because by the time it gets there, China will want it. No, it's all contracted. It has to be insured. So if you're going to put oil on a on a super tanker and then you know fire that super tanker up and run it to wherever you want it to go. It has to be an insured uh, uh, a payload of, pro of product in advance. So the insurance company, Lloyds of London, whoever's insuring the entire tanker itself, all the oil on the tanker and the environmental disastrous cost of cleanup, if it were necessary, that all has to be covered by insurance in advance, all registered up front. And they want to know who the buyer is, who's taking delivery of this so they can confirm that this ship is really delivering commercial goods for sale, pre-sold, or whatever. Oil is off 358 a barrel. It's not, uh, and these are oil futures. This is the future we're talking about. Oil futures aren't going up. They're going down. So I think we've got a, uh, uh, you know, a scenario where there's a pullback coming. I keep talking about a lower low for this market than we've had uh, so far in this downturn. I, I, I just think so. But it could be three months from now before we get there. I mean, it could just be a three-month slow bleed out of, you know, uninspired trading uh, that could be just happening here with a few blips, you know, ups and downs. And we'll figure it out. But anyway, we'll we'll watch for all of that. Um, interesting stuff, huh? Um, nice to have you here. Uh, thank you for joining in. Uh, thank you for 54 thumbs ups already, too. Thank you for that. Uh, throw them up there if you can. Hit those thumbs up button for us. Get us to 100 as soon as possible. Um, yes, um, mm, OPEC has reduced its global oil demand forecast. That's what they've done today. They've they've actually come out and said it that yeah, you know we're uh, hmm, we don't think we're uh, you know going to be producing uh, or uh, needing as much oil at the end, for the end clients as we thought. And so South American purchases, African purchases, Asian purchases, European purchases, North American, just not there. Not as high as hoped uh, going forward. And so we have this pullback and we could see easily another $15 a barrel come off this price uh, over the next week or two. We could beat 70 in, in no time. Putting gasoline prices in America into the low threes, uh, possibly, uh, maybe the high twos, depending on which state you're living in. You know, certain states have higher taxes than others, but I don't know. That's what I'm wondering. Uh, the VIX is up 0.74. Uh, that's a little more negative, but it's it's only a 23. It's nothing serious. Um, we'll watch for the volatility index always. We're down 3.8 now on the NASDAQ, on the uh, S&P, and we're down 30 on NASDAQ. These two markets are definitely heading south. The Dow is being dragged along with it. It's now only up 24 points, so we are getting more. Uh, selling in some of the stocks we love to follow here just to kind of update you tesla today um the shares this morning uh opened at 192 and they promptly went down to 186 in the first 30 minutes of trading not even that first 15 minutes we were down to 186 uh six dollars lower than where we are now almost 10 bucks a share lower then they hit the high around between one and two this afternoon 12 and 1 right in that range. They reached a 195.73 briefly, um, but now they've backed off a bit. 192.74 down 323. A little more selling coming in now as the latter part of the day is kicking in. The thing about Tesla, you see, you all hear about, you've all heard about how these vehicles are pre ordered by people. Uh, the Model 3, which is the, the small sedan great car uh there were three hundred thousand pre-ordered with thousand dollar deposits uh, seven years ago six years ago then about four years ago they started coming out three years ago uh the model y which is the small suv version same thing hundreds of thousands of pre-orders and you know here we go uh the vehicles are a lot more expensive today than they were when they came out because 
Tesla tries to raise its prices every chance it gets. Tesla so happy that the federal government is offering all of these incentives, these tax incentives, rebates and so on to American taxpayers. Because what Tesla is going to do is that if you get a $7,000 government credit, they'll raise the price 5,000 bucks. They'll take five of that and let you keep two. Um, but there's a problem in Tesla land that no one wants to talk about. And it's going to come up. It's going to start. I'm going to be the first to fill you in on what's coming up. Um, the biggest driver of Tesla sales has been um, uh, customers in their 20s and 30s. Uh, we're talking about the uh, university graduate type person um, getting a reasonable, successful type job and um, and uh, putting together a, a, a leasable, financeable way to get their hands on a Tesla. And um, the, the, the hugest, largest buyers are Californians, Arizonans, Oregonians, Washington State, uh, and, and, and of course in Texas and elsewhere. But it's the younger you know the younger crowd and if you're anything to do with uh with uh with high tech anything to do with uh, software uh, um, online anything you know you're you're into this car i mean this is this is got you written all over nothing wrong with that um, a lot of other people love the cars too and you know it's a successful brand let's not kid ourselves but here's the thing I'm just telling you a few minutes ago that the word is that, Tes that Amazon is going to uh, let 10,000 people go in the new, probably in the new year, right after Christmas. I, I'm expecting hundreds of thousands of layoffs in the, uh, the online world, the uh, software world, the cloud computing world. I'm expecting layoffs of very high, high paying jobs. We're not talking about $35,000 starting positions. We're not talking $45,000 teacher salaries, $50,000 uh, principal salary. We're talking about people who come in here anywhere from 80 to 280,000 a year. These kinds of folks, the kinds of folks that buy a Tesla, a lot of them. And if they get a hunch that they might be possibly potentially laid off in the new year, or there's cutbacks, they're going to cut back on consumption. And what's one area you cut back on? You cancel your Tesla order. You just cancel it and wait. And you say to yourself, I'll wait till summertime to say whether I'm going to buy this thing or not. I'm going to get one eventually, but I may not want to be on the hook for one right at this time. This could be an issue for Tesla that no one has talked about because North American demand has been strong and government is trying to get people to go this direction, electric cars. Everyone's trying to get into it. GM and Ford and all these other companies. Uh, but Tesla has this head start. The question is, what happens if Model Y, Model 3 orders fall off a cliff and a bunch get canceled out? What you're going to hear about for the first time ever is you're going to hear stories about how Teslas are drowning out dealer lots. These Tesla service centers where you go and get your car, they're not designed to handle 500 cars each for inventory. They need to have to rent space to park Teslas until they get sold. At the moment, you want a Tesla, you have to put an order in and wait for them to contact you when you can get your car. It might be a month, three months, six months, depending on the model. Well, what if it flips around and all of a sudden they have a six-month supply of Teslas all over the place, different regions, different numbers? That's a whole different ballgame. Now you're going to see discounts, rebates, uh, cheap interest rate offers. Just like any other car company, it's got a, you've got a time to move these cars. This could be a most interesting turnabout. And for Tesla shareholders, shock, an absolute shock will come to the system because in the case of Tesla, the margins are going to shrink dramatically. It's true that as each month goes by and each quarter goes by, Tesla can make vehicles for more, for less money, and have a larger, bigger profit margin. This has been happening for a couple of years. And the thinking was this would continue as these new factories come on board. Each new factory created is more efficient than the last, has the latest equipment, has the lowest number of employees per vehicle to assemble because they don't deal with the Teamsters Union. But the question is, what if the orders on the pre-order side back off and Tesla all of a sudden realizes, wow, 
we thought we needed a million car cars a quarter to meet the demand and now it's only three quarters of a million or half a million per quarter going forward what if the china thing really is as bad as bruce keeps saying and that the demand in china for electric cars is going to fall off a cliff because despite china government's encouragement of electric cars and all this if the uh, folks in china feel that you know many members of their family extended family are already laid off at factory jobs could happen to them they're not going to go out and extend themselves on something like a tesla hmm. makes you wonder doesn't it anyway it's 193.11 down 286 it's not in trouble but on the other hand i figure with mr musk needing money to uh, to uh, keep the bleeding keep covering the bleeding at twitter uh he's going to need to raise cash so there might be more pressure on the stock we'll follow this and I'll let you know apple down 37 cents at 149.33 gamestop is up 17 cents to 26.27 we hit a low today on gamestop of uh, 25.61 uh that was hit around noon hour today shares took a bit of a dip uh, tried to recover and got back up to, uh, looks like they touched, uh, oh, 26.65. So, you know, they came up a dollar and then they backed off. Now they're 26.29 again, 26.28. Uh, we'll see if this holds. But it's up 19 cents on the day. That's it. It's a nothing burger today on GameStop. SoFi up one penny. We did break $6 today. 6.05 was the high today on games on SoFi today. 38 million volume, though. You know what that means? Half the volume of Friday at this time, barely. And so, you, you know, you need we need 70 to 100 million volume a day to get SoFi going, to get it running. Um, at this kind of volume, is not enough. There's a lot of day trading going on, and that makes up a lot of the trades anyway. But there just doesn't seem to be enough genuine interest long-term buying today to take this substantially higher it's up a penny but that's all hpq unchanged at 3054 it ran up today to 3091 about oh, an hour and a half ago uh but it's now giving it back we're back to even on the day so far hpq it's had a good run though, the last couple of weeks amazon down a dollar 43 to 99.36 home depot down 540 to 309 that's had a good run lately cisco up a quarter at 4504 but it's backed off its highs pfizer 4960 after topping out at 4982 hasn't hit 50 in a while it's trying to hit 50 since about oh august sometime let's see when's the last time we saw this yeah 50 bucks a share uh july in july early august august 1 September, October, November, three. Oh, well, yeah, here we are. Um, two and a half months since it's been 50. So welcome back, um, Pfizer. Welcome back to the 50 neighborhood. It's nice to see you here. Low of 41.45 this summer. What a what a drag in October. Um, Netflix up $14 to 304. Who thinks it's worth that? Who thinks Netflix should be worth 304? Uh, in theory, it's trading at 24 times earnings. I don't even know if those earnings are reliable. I don't know if they actually can hold this. Uh, I don't know if the money is there. This is interesting. IBM is up 192 to 145.09. We got Microsoft down four bucks still, 243. Vanic Vector is up 26 cents. Adobe up 282 with a high today of 345.11. Adobe uh, had uh, had been as high as 700 a share in the last uh, 12 or so months, and crapped out to 270 four at its lows now at 343 so you can see how far down these stocks have come from from their highs uh, adobe's uh, value right now market value 160 billion and the sh these shares have been double this so this had been a 320 billion dollar company and uh, still off by half quite amazing but it is up today uh goldman uh down 17 cents Google down three cents. Boeing is down two fifty four. So none of these three are leading the market. Moderna one eighty forty eight uh, up nine twenty eight. The high today one eighty four. The low this morning one sixty nine. Uh, Moderna's high in the last twenty four months three seventy six. We're still half price. 
and Moderna's having a good day today. We're still half price. It is so far down from where it once was. But there is slow but surely more good news coming out from Moderna these days about their vaccines. Meta platforms, the old Facebook up 148 a share to $114. Uh, the high for the year, 353. This was a trillion dollar market cap company at one time. Uh, it was up there, um, but uh, not now. All right, let's see what else is going on here. Um, 23andMe is unchanged. Rocket Lab down 39 cents. Matterport down 22. ATIP is at 63 cents, down 5.7 cents. Smart Rent down a dime. We got Spire down six cents. We have Six Era down 25. All those SPACs are lower. The only SPAC higher is um, ME Breaking Even and uh, SoFi was up one penny today. Royal Caribbean down 35 cents. We got uh, uh, we got Target up 150. JP Morgan down 48. Costco down a dollar. Walmart down two bucks. We've got. Um, Let's see, Disney up 19 cents, NVIDIA is up 95 uh, cents right now. American Airlines down 3 to 14.84. There you have it. Though Dow right now is up 21 points. Now it shows 19 points to the upside only. GameStop up 27 cents at the moment. I'm showing um, S&P down 5.5. NASDAQ is off 37. Oil down 3.68. Oil is, is really taking a hit. A 4.1% drop today in value. That's uh, notable. That is something to to watch for and watch uh, going forward. Thank you all for for being here. Uh, what else is going on here? Um, uh, what do we got here? What do we got here? Uh, let's see. Uncle Bruce uh, DQ. I rolled my Modernas. Okay, so January 2023 125s into June 2023s 140s. Uh, only brought in an extra 55 cents a share in cash, but 15 higher strike. That is very good. That's 1500 in your pocket, not the guy exercising you out at 125. I like this move. Um, sometimes the best move you can make is to move up smartly in a um, in a premium position. Move the premium up. Um, and uh, this is a, this is a good start. Now the shares are 179. He's moved up from 125 to 140. He's still in the money on his call, but his odds of being uh, exercised are rather low, being uh, being much higher than 125s and being out to June. Now the game plan could be uh, for DQ if the shares uh, want to keep holding these levels and go higher, he could look at the possibility of moving into Jan 2024s. And he might move up to 170s or something like that, 175s. He could always play that game later. The other idea is if the shares and the market has a bit of a pullback and these shares give up 30 bucks real quick, you know, in the next week or two or three, and they can do this, um, you know, 150 a share, 140 a share, all of a sudden he's at money. Uh, his calls will give up ground. I mean, they're, they're going to, you know, they're going to drop from where they are now because they're 39 in the money. If they become at money or just barely in money, they're going to drop a lot of value. That could allow DQ to uh, buy back his 140s for June and uh, write 120s for June. Um, um, he might do that move, and that's a cash move. That where that's where he he buys back his call here and he writes the 120s here, and uh, he brings in some money and and you know pulls the string the other direction. But right now. DQ is taking the heat off and it's just going, okay, I got time to relax here. Let's let the stock go higher. I'll roll again. Uh, wants to go a little lower. We'll watch the call, the call, val the call values fall and I'll decide where my profit margin is and isn't and what I do next. Nice position to be in, sir. It's good to have the stock up. No, it's for darn sure. Alex, I rolled a $27 HPQ that expires May 2023 uh, to a $30 HPQ. That expires February uh, 2023 at a cost of 290. All learned from lesson number 12. So he bought back. Uh, he 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 bought a, a 27 and wrote a 30, uh, and he came in closer. So uh, interesting, interesting move here. HBQ, where are we at right now in the stock? We're sitting at 3056. He's right at money, 
and um, uh, closer in in time. So he doesn't have to wait till May. He's now here. If the shares back off a buck to twenty nine fifty, these are out of the money, and the depreciation just keep keeps coming in, and uh, he'll take that for sure. All right, uh, Gaiotti, uh, Brian, I've noticed the last few waves of buying and selling that start off with a big dump or rally. Seems like last two, three days, large gains, losses day one, less day two, very little day three, today's day three. Mr. Premium, um, hopefully they're paying for that new fancy car in cash. <laughs> uh, Gaiotti, um, just like my observations and uh, and OFC past results do not predict future move, just a feeling that when the momentum starts to turn, people will take profit. I hear you there. Zach, we got to move these refrigerators. We got to move these color TVs. That's right. Uh, money for nothing. TJ, hi, Bruce. One thing they don't mention about new EV bill is that the vehicle must be made in America with batteries from North American materials. Yeah, there's all kinds of restrictions on it. I hear you there. And I think that's negative for Tesla. If it gets more difficult for people to get these rebates, then it won't help Tesla sales and even more cancellations. I mean, just, you know, we'll see. Alberto, uh, Uncle, sorry, I'm here. We can begin now. Rugman, Ragman, where are you at? Uh, my arms are folded. Uh, Nick, I just closed 33 AMC contract, $20 strike, uh, written for 23 January for 1318, covered it for 80 cent gain and 42,000 and rewrote three weeks out for eight for eight strike for 80. Okay. <laughs> it's, <coughs> it's not easy to read this stuff. Um, okay. January covered it and, and rewrote three weeks out. Okay. Um, all right. All right. Uh, uh, I, I, it sounds like he's making money. Uh, DH Alberto. Uh, Rugman waits patiently for his victims to stand on this trap. If Rugman pulls his rug too frequently, they pray sometimes they become wise to the trap. So he has to just stand still, stand, stand strong, allow the cape to stand behind, flow behind him and wait for the suckers to stand on it. And then yoink, <laughs> the Dow is up only 10 points. So the Dow is backing off. We're down eight on S&P. We're down 46 on NASDAQ. It's not a massive sell-off. We're just backing off a little bit. All right. Um, Apple down 37. Tesla down 325 now. GameStop is up 17 cents. That's it, 17 cents. SoFi down a penny, 594. HBQ 3056 up two cents. Uh, Alex, um, Alberto, coming soon to a theater near you. Rugman strikes back. Uh, Alberto, DH Ruta, thank you. Uh, Nick, sorry, it was AMC. It was AMC. He's doing some tra trading on AMC contracts. Alberto, Alex, I'm sitting in the front row. Nick stretched out as far as it can be. Tell him to hurry up laughing out loud. Uh, T, T Hutch, Uncle Bruce, I sold cover calls last week on SoFi. Uh, 50 at 550 and 100 at 6. Both 1219. I assume I should wait until I get closer to the December 19th to roll forward. Um, uh, so, yeah, right now the shares are 594. You've written 550s and sixes. It's down a penny at the moment. Uh, the markets are not going anywhere today. Got to make you wonder if we're going to see a little profit taking pullback tomorrow, Wednesday. Um, even three, four, six, seven hundred points, something like that on the Dow. Um, and does SoFi go to 575, 565? Uh, nothing serious, but for you, uh, it's the kind of move that you know makes a difference. Uh, something to see, uh, Mando. I am number 70, Bruce, on your thumbs ups meter today. I'm there, baby. Thank you so much. Sell my house fast, upper Marlboro, number 72, buddy. Yeah, I'm at 72 for you. Thank you. Uh, Uncle Bruce, uh, Splair, any thoughts about Matterport and still a possible jump during the next few days? The chart makes looks like it's struggling. Uh, today's a down day. We're getting profit-taking, interestingly enough, on the SPACs. I, I really wonder how these SPACs, they sometimes pre-move the markets. Uh, it's really amazing uh, how they are actually front-running the market lower while the market is trying to show a positive spin, but there is no positive spin on this market. So you got ME down, Rocket Lab is lower, Matterport, ATIP, Smart Rent, Spire, Sixter, they're all lower fractionally. Uh, they all had an incredible two or three day run. I mean, they had a really good run. 
but this is where the money goes out first. Uh, the money money comes out of these stocks before it comes out of Apple and 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 uh, Microsoft and other big ticket stocks. Uh, but eventually, it goes across the board. And if the market doesn't keep running higher, people start pulling money out. And right now, there are a lot of sensitive people out there who are sitting there going, "I am down a lot of cash in this bear market. I've I've been waiting and waiting and waiting because they don't write stock options, and they're they're going." I've got a gain going on some of my stuff. Like some of my stuff is coming back, sort of kind of coming back. I want to take profits and, uh, you know, maybe I'll sit in the sidelines and buy back in lower because they don't think about writing options uh, to benefit from a quiet, flat market or a depreciating market. In any event, um, yeah, uh, interesting on Matterport. It, it could be just a one day or two day thing, but I, I don't know. I just don't. Susan shops about. I'm number 73 and I'm listening. Thank you very much. DH Alberto, uh, shift your weight to the other foot. Alternate your arms, cross stance, and repeat. Rugman will be joining the fun when you least expect it. Even his fans have no idea when Rugman will show. You just never know when Rugman will show up on a, on a traveling mug. Uh, you just, who are you going to call anyway? Uh, that's right. Yoink. Giddy up. Uh, Susan shops about, um, I'm holding for now on my 15 SoFi, May 2023, $6 strikes at 90 cent. I'm just not feeling much of a catalyst to move it much higher. Any thoughts, anybody? Yeah, right now. No, no. Um, SoFi's off a nickel to 590. Uh, the Dow's off 10 points. So no, 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 no need at all. Alex, a DH, that makes more sense. Thank you. A splare, thanks. That could explain my issue I have today while watching everything here. I just don't want to roll over Matterport calls. I need to cash out a little bit here. Nick, um, AMC was in the uh, AMC was one of uh, shares of my retirement holding account bag, uh, which I shorted, but I got suckered into that mother of all short squeeze things. I'll need to make twenty three on each trade, twenty three times to recoup my cost on this mistake. <laughs> Gosh. Mirko, 83rd, thumbs up. Hawkeye, 84. Pickcom, I think I'm 84. Maybe I'm 85. Uh, yeah, um, Matterport is under the radar, I think. I think you're right, too. I believe that. Uh, thank you, guys, for these uh, thumbs ups. We're pushing 100 here pretty quick. 87 in the in the house, 13 to go, and we got 100 thumbs ups. You guys are awesome. I don't think that's going to be a problem today. Thank you so very, very much. BW, uh, I was at 82, I think. Do you think some of this sell-off of the former SPACs because they got sold first? Is, is shorts coming due uh, the FTX fallouts? Oh, boy. Uh, yeah, man, man, oh man, you haven't seen anything yet on the FTX fallout. You really haven't. Um, I, uh, I was thinking about this last night and then again this morning about the possibility is that, um, um, we're likely going to see a lot of, uh, Department of Justice, uh, fraud cases brought up uh, by the DOJ um, against entities, corporations, entities, what have you. I I suspect. Uh, oh my goodness. Um, I suspect that. Um, I suspect that um, uh, we're going to see uh, firms who are going to be um, uh, charged with uh, uh, misrepresenting asset allocations of clients assets where people have thought that they parked their crypto in a safe place and they were probably uh, being paid some kind of an interest rate on the value of their crypto or something like that and what really was going on in the back room was the crypto was accepted <clears throat> this is all virtual of course but it was accepted at the at by the teller <laughs> the teller uh, then put the crypto in the vault in the back of the bank. And then in the after hours, uh, the, uh, the bankers, uh, 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 senior traders went in there, grabbed a bunch of crypto and threw it into the, the derivatives market to leverage it. And they were leveraging either upward movements or what have you uh, many, many times over. And they were using some of the crypto as collateral to hold these derivative contracts just like the meltdown of 0809 on interest on the mortgage-backed securities way back when. 
And I kind of wonder, uh, are we going to hear in the next three months all kinds of horror stories where um, all, all kinds of middle size investment houses out there that tried to claim them to claim to be sort of crypto uh, marketing agents and uh, deposit services and what have you. A whole bunch of these guys are leveraged out or got involved with entrepreneurs that promised them returns uh, that um, turned out to be all predicated on the success of derivative type trading contracts leveraging up all this crypto what have you and so i'm wondering if certain firms lent crypto to other firms for for just pure interest and some kind of a loan arrangement and now they can't get payment because the entity that borrowed that crypto used the crypto to put into some derivatives trades for massive risky returns and now they can't make the payments because they've lost it all and or what they were using as collateral has depreciated so badly that they are in default of their crypto covenants all these complex trades so many of which are not on any exchange where you and i can't just i can't just type it up on market watch and tell you what it's trading at it doesn't exist it's not a publicly traded entity it's a privately traded entity on the derivatives market that is a closed shop to those participants. I'm wondering if we're going to hear horror stories of mega, mega leveraged scenarios that are blowing up, haven't blown up yet, about to. And also, what about outfits like SoftBank and other major, humongous sized hedge fund operators and players who quietly and also behind the scenes got involved in this game? to play the derivatives party, the crypto party, whether they were for it or against it or around it or all over it, I have no idea. And I'm wondering just how many times leveraged has this stuff gone over and over and over again? And we've got ourselves a, a you know, what was supposed to be a several billion dollar problem turning into a trillion dollar problem and will it affect any particular street known firm uh, a name that you and i can understand uh, a brand name investment bank or something like that would that happen um i'm waiting for shoes to drop the other many other shoes to drop we i don't think we've seen anything yet i i, I really i really don't so folks stand by i'll keep you posted dh nick i love your exit strategy just trade it to the to death until it's profitable uh spicy is number 93 thank you nick where is rugman when you need one i need his help on s snow on snow uh, it's up on a hype that uh warren's fund invested into it and motley fool want to upload unload to the newbies who are cheerleading it uh nick Rugman, bring it down below 136, would you please? Beach Boy. So, Uncle Bruce, earlier today, I rolled January 25s into March 26s with a $2,500 powder uh, to show for it as well, an, an increase in powder. Please check out Jen's fund. Ho, ho, ho. I saw that, and thank you uh, yet again um, uh, very much. Uh, that That is awesome. Uh, I will let her know that her uh, her uh, her uh, uh, her uh, medical fund is uh, is uh, is uh, prettier. <laughs> I don't know what word to use. Uh, is even more solvent than before. You're unbelievable, man. Uh, thank you uh, so much, all of you. Uh, Alex uh, Beach Boy, nice going, Mirko. Beach Boy, well done, man. Susan shops about. I think the fallout on the SPACs is because. They bypass the investment firms in going public. They have no love for the SPACs, the firms, uh, kind of teaching SPACs a lesson. It's just going to take more time. A funny thing, too, is that the uh, a lot of the firms actually were involved in creating SPACs. They helped SPACs get underwritten and listed. They charged fees. Um, a lot of the investment bankers in Wall Street made money. Uh, they also attracted uh, pipe Financers, uh, financings. Uh, they 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 attracted this ten dollar a share 
money that went into these uh, SPACs. Uh, some of these outfits were involved in introducing private companies to SPACs. Uh, and they got, they got some fees for their services. But uh, what they weren't involved with is secondary financings. Because these SPACs um, uh, never got to the point where, uh, you know, private company number one joined in with a SPAC, took it over. It's now sitting on 400 million cash. And then that company uh, decided to buy a second company and a third company, perhaps the second, the third largest companies in the field that this company is in, to make it a make this large this public company even larger. Those deals never took place because the SEC got involved last year, 2021, in uh, March, April, May, with unbearable uh, refiling requirements and all kinds of uh, disclosure requirements uh, to, to protect the investors who got into those deals so that you know they were fully aware of what they were buying. And by the time the SEC got finished with these SPACs, they all had to lay out millions of dollars in refiling fees and re-auditing fees and all these other expenses uh, to protect their own shareholders. And what happened with the shares? They all collapsed in price, which means the SEC helped crash the value of the of the SPACs across the board to protect the very investors that were in those SPACs in the first place. I mean, it was it's unbelievable, and you can't charge anybody with that. You can't sue anybody for that. You, you, there's no one to sue. It is ridiculous. Um, but the S the 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 street um, they've also lost billions of dollars in fees due to a complete lack of IPOs because every single IPO that was on the table that was rumored to come out, there were hundreds of IPOs in the works up until two years ago. They're all dead now. There are no new IPOs coming up right now. You, you rarely hear about one anymore. They're almost non-existent. And with higher interest rates expected and inflation the way it is and a slowdown in the economy, there will be no new IPOs. And existing SPACs are having a devil of a time getting deals put together. But, but then again, the SEC is there to protect you uh, against, uh, I don't know what, uh, because um, they cost you more money than they'll ever make you. They don't make you a dime. Um, they're trying now, in a way, the SEC, to eliminate um, uh, pay, per, uh, pay per trade uh, so that you have to pay a minimum commission every time you buy and sell stock to protect you. I have no idea how this works because right now when you buy a uh, thousand shares of SoFi, you buy it at, uh, you know, five ninety eight a share. There isn't a 10 cent commission on top of that hidden somewhere to anybody else. Um, and uh, it's maybe one tenth of a cent of a share. I mean, one tenth of a penny per share. It's not, it's a nothing burger where 10, 15 years ago, we used to see, Brokerage firms brag about the fact it was only fifteen ninety nine. Um, you know, you pay twenty bucks a month minimum for for your bro unlimited trades for twenty bucks a month, or it was uh, five ninety nine a trade or nine ninety nine a trade. It used to only be nine ninety nine a trade. Yeah, ten bucks to do a trade uh, each way. I mean, today it's not it's virtually nothing, and the SEC is there to protect you. I mean, these guys are unbelievable. I don't know. I don't know. Mirko, especially the fun thing. Uh, Brian, I have been reading lots about FX, FTX. Seems like it was the new age Ponzi scheme. Good luck to us all. Uh, Larry, hi, everybody. I'm number 100. Uh, Boris, uh, and we're in the red. We got 12 minutes to go. Mirko, yippee kaye. Um, Gaiote, anyone remember the Bitcoin uh, quadriga debacle? Feels similar in many ways. Pickcomb, SEC, no soup for you. Uh, Brian, they could also short the tokens yeah you wonder alberto gowdy thanks for releasing the rug man tesla's moving let's get going 148 uh 76 on apple down 94 and 19103 down 494 on tesla the dow's off 57 points and falling we're down 19 on s p 86 on nasdaq uh we're going lower gamestop is up just 15 cents at the moment we're down a nickel on sofi we're down a nickel on hpq amazon down two bucks now Home Depot down 686. Cisco is up just six cents. Uh, Pfizer is still ahead 189, but pump, pulling back ever so slightly. Netflix is still up 1060 at $300 a share, but it was at 311 about 15 minutes ago. Uh, 
Netflix has just lost $11 in like 10 minutes. IBM is at 144.54 after topping out at 146.08. So we've given up some ground here. Um, we're still up 139, but falling back. Microsoft is negative and staying there, 449 on the downside. Vanek Vectors is down 119. Adobe is only up 118 now after being as high as 345. It's now 342. Adobe is backing off. Goldman down 127. Google down 37. Boeing down 335 and falling. Moderna is still ahead 770, but under 170 nine a share under the 180 mark meta up 147 me is down one and a half pennies rocket lab down 45 matterport down 26 atip is down 5.8 cents smart rent down 13 spire down nine sixtero down 29 royal caribbean down 32 carvana down a buck 98 to 990 Robinhood down 91 to 956 blackberry down 21 cents um uh, Target is up 93, but JP Morgan off a dollar. Costco down three. Walmart down three bucks. Disney down 47 cents. Nvidia is trying to hang around. Uh, American Airlines look, looks like it's still in the red as well. Right now, we are showing the Dow off 75 points at the moment, and uh, uh, GameStop is up, is holding up at uh, 26.30, a 20 cent gain, or so it would appear. Um, what else we got on? Coyote thinks that uh, Rugman should kneecap Meta as well. BW, hearing over 100 billion plus went poof in the FTX and could be the biggest Ponzi scheme in world history. Hearing a few U.S. banks may be filing for bankruptcy protection. SoftBank reported a $100 million, what? They reported it gone? Uh, I'm not sure there. Um, Mirko, Coyote, there are really, there are two really old, really rich guys who told us all not to touch crypto. And uh, with a 10-foot cattle prod, seems age gives you some kind of wisdom. Uh, interesting. Nick, in, in, a two, in two weeks, November 30, snow reports. I predict they'll be going back to 130 before the earnings comes out. Alberto, Coyote, kneecap, or a Tanya Harding? Uh, it's the same thing, you know. Uh, Boris, isn't it ironic that the post on Twitter, which member mentioned that a Tesla car went nuts in China and killed two people, was removed? Uh, that's kind of interesting. Uh, Brian, what is this snow? We in Canada do not invest in snow. There's too much of a winter, silly Nick. Uh, Gaiotti, Alberto, I'm not a picky man. Um, Mirko, uh, Larry was Larry Sanders is right. This is Alberto. Uh, Splare, in the meantime, I use monthly 10, 20 bucks to, to get it while it's cheap. It's a little bit of the point where my trades go over a year ago in January. Uh, he's buying something cheap. Uh, Gaiotti, with age comes wisdom and indigestion. <laughs> <laughs> and a lack of sleep, proper sleep. Uh, there you go. Uh, the Dow is off 75, uh, down 20 on S&P, down 82 on NASDAQ. Um, the Dow is, is lagging behind the rest of the market. Uh, if the Dow was equal to uh, NASDAQ, the Dow would be down 250 points right now, down the, down 80-odd. 80, 80 uh, and uh, the two-year Treasury yield has jumped again on the U.S. Treasury uh, because the Treasury officials are saying we're not going to just go back to uh, zero interest rates. That's not happening, guys. Rates are going higher. Uh, we're going to nail this inflation for quite some time. Don't get too optimistic that the party is over and all that. We're, we've only just begun. Interesting, interesting. 3.87% uh, on the uh, tenure, um, and uh, we're up uh, about three one-hundredths of a percentage point so far. We'll see how this plays out tomorrow it'll be interesting to watch the action overnight noticing the euro down just a little bit holding at 103 level so that's over par and the pound at 117.6 uh that's up four cents from its lows you know 113 lows kind of we've been lower than that as you know but uh, that's what i see all right uh back to the u.s market down 81 on the uh, dow now 96 points lower on the dow jones we're down to seven minutes um to go s p down about 20 nasdaq down about 80 that is the story uh what is what we're seeing here okay 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 what else is going on here uh, uh, <laughs> uh folks are talking about stuff that i don't understand what they're talking about but that's okay uh everyone have a good time i'm a happy guy Tesla, 191.20, down 477. Apple, down 86 to 148.84.
GameStop is up three cents. We're about to go red on GameStop. Uh, Twenty six thirteen last trade. Running into stock. Uh, stock's coming in here at the very end of the market. Uh, up two cents on GameStop. Twenty six twelve as we approach the break even line on uh, GameStop shares. Uh, down five on SoFi. Five ninety a share. HPQ now is unchanged. Uh, that's given up its gains. Amazon holding uh, still down to 11 a share on on uh, on Amazon. Uh okay. Uh what else? Um, um Yeah, Softback writes down 100 million investment in FTX. 100 million. I I wonder how many uh, many more times that other outfits are writing off on this investment through derivative trades, leverage trades that are just going negative. 136 down drop now. We're ac accelerating the down drop now on uh, on the market, it looks like. Um, 25 point drop on S&P and NASDAQ's now down 94. So we're, we're falling further faster, 140 on the Dow. We're down to 190.77 on Tesla. We might break 190 here with five minutes to go. Easily done. Uh, can easily happen. Down a dollar seven on Apple now. Um, GameStop is red, negative five cents. Uh, 2605. GameStop has gone into the red. SoFi down six now, 588. HBQ down six. Uh, getting some negative uh, prints showing up now. Uh, we're dealing with a red market. Uh, and I'm not complaining since I rolled my cover calls. That's right. Those of you rollover specialists out there, you are benefiting here. Uh, GameStop down 7 now to 2603. Next stop is 26 even. Will the, will the shares go through 26 and drop another 15 cents? We got four minutes to find out. 2603 uh, on GameStop down 7 cents on the day now. So we are definitely hitting uh, uh, negative 175 on the Dow now, negative 175. The Dow in the last hour, well, 40 minutes to an hour, has gone from a positive reading to a negative reading uh, quickly, uh, fairly, fairly decisively. Um, yeah, looks like, I don't know if I can get this to work. Sometimes I can, but there are other times my big S iPad won't work. Uh, yeah, 33,800 something now to 33,500 something. 300 points have been given up. 196 drop on the Dow now. We're pushing 200 points here at the moment. Uh, GameStop 2602, 2601, 2598. We just broke 26 bucks. Hot knife through soft butter. Just went right through 26 bucks support level down 12 cents at 2598 at this moment in time. Down we go. Um, uh, what can I say? We're below 26, Coyote. You got it. Um, uh, Tesla at 190.57, uh, holding a, a still a 540 loss now, barely holding on to 190. We're down 209 on the Dow. Apple now down a buck 60 to 148.08. It is giving up ground pretty quick. GameStop 25.94, now down 16 cents. SoFi 588 down seven, uh, HPQ down eight, uh, Amazon down 240, Home Depot down 841, uh, Cisco down nine cents. It's lost all its gains. Cisco was as high as 4544. Now it's uh, 4470. So that's a uh, you know pretty good percentage drop here uh, in this afternoon session from about 1:30 to three, uh, you know, four o'clock here. Two minutes to go. Um, Two minutes left to run, and we are uh, we'll be done. Um, that's what's going on. Um, 200, uh, 206 point drop on the uh, on the Dow. Uh, 190 74 on Tesla. GameStop holding on to 26 for a moment. This dead cat bounce, don't think it's going to last. Um, Uncle Bruce can't stay, but I want to get in a thumbs up. Number 113 says, Who cares? I'll see you later. Thanks, pal. Deep value. BBBY was ahead of the market the whole day. It predicted the final dip of the day. Alberto saying to Mirko, no, but true story. I went to my res to my resort and my granddaughter sits near me smelling my arm. She loves the scents. 
<laughs> Brian, um, 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 put open interest on GameStop um, at twenty five is two hundred is twenty thousand contracts. Ooh, call option interest on GameStop twenty five sixty five hundred for November eighteen. Yeah, yeah that's uh, institutional trading going on. One eighty two dip on the Dow. Uh, <coughs> GameStop twenty six oh two. 26.03 uh, with a minute to go. So that's what we have. We're 588 on SoFi, down seven cents now uh, under the $6 mark. Avish, uh, Avish, uh, question on poor my cover call. When you buy a deep in the money, doesn't that put you at a risk to be assigned? No, no. If you buy a deep in the money, you have the option to assign somebody else. Deuce, man, SoFi hit 604 today and thought we were breaking through and staying above six, then smacked right back down. Reed headed stepchild, uh, 116 thumbs up, says Deuce Caboose. Mirko, Netflix down from 311, 299. Seems Rugman showed up on that one. Yeah, well, that's what's, um, what we're watching here. Uh, Rugman has come in. We're down to the last minute, guys. And Larry has said, the minute's over. We're done. Speaking of Larry, uh, boom, there he is. Thanks, pal. A 213-point drop on the Dow here in the last moments. Uh, came through. Um, GameStop 2601, barely hanging on to 26 dollars, down nine cents. So, by 586, down nine cents. Um, HBQ down 12, Amazon down 230. So, yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, uh, Deuce Caboose, uh, I have a stink bit in for another 5,000, 595. Giddy up. Um, uh, Larry, that's all, folks. Uh, that is all. Thanks. Thanks, Larry from Slayer uh, Gaudi. Traders starting to look a little scared, maybe. Alberto, 575. I meant that's where I am. Not 595. I'm at 575. Interesting close. A really interesting close. It was a, a steep, sudden negative at the very end of the day. It, it went it went red fast, and it went red through all support levels, and we were at the low of the day when we shut her down tonight. Uh, that's on the Dow. We were at the low of the day on the Dow when we shut the market down. On uh, on S and P five hundred, uh, we uh, touched the low of the day at the very end. And uh, uh, let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at Nasdaq here. Nasdaq at the end of the day also uh, tried to hit the the low, but it didn't quite do it. The low of the day was about uh, fifteen minutes into the opening uh, for a moment. And uh, we didn't quite get there, but uh, we were on our way to much lower levels uh, as the uh, as the minutes passed here at the very end of the uh, evening. Very interesting, my friends. Very interesting indeed. Um, we'll follow this to say the least tomorrow. After hours, GameStop right now twenty five ninety eight. Uh, so we're under twenty six on the after hour trades for GameStop right now. How about that? How about them apples? Uh, interesting, you guys. Um, uh, yeah, one ninety ninety five on on Tesla. Uh, we're setting up for a down dip tomorrow here. Uh, the way this market closed tonight, we'll see how this uh, you know reacts in Asia and, and Europe overnight. Uh, five eighty six on SoFi and uh, and so on. Uh, Home Depot lost eight bucks. Cisco down a nickel. When it was all said and done, it was in the red. Pfizer. Closed at 49.27, so it backed off uh, about not quite 60 cents from its high today, and it's now 12 cents lower in the aftermarket, 49.15 Pfizer, so it's given up more ground. Netflix, 2.99 uh, from 3.11 high. Uh, interesting. IBM, just up a dollar at 144. Microsoft lost 550. Vanek lost 209. Adobe down 78 cents. Now, this one had been green most of the day. Adobe got the 345 today, and then it lost five bucks in the last hour to go negative uh, uh, on the session. Interesting to see that. Um, surprising, well, you know, not not always surprised, but it's interesting to see this happening. Goldman down 261, it went red. Google went red down 70. Boeing 387 is the low uh, down 37 at 173. Interesting to see that. Um, Moderna up 780 at uh, 179 um interesting there we'll watch that tomorrow um under 180 meta down is up 120 and it gave up some ground and uh, and we still had red all over the place on our uh, on our former SPACs. so that's what's going on uh <clears throat> let's see um 
Oh, let's see what else is going on. Splare, I closed today my leverage position as well and cashed in a little for my PayPal. Now I have instead 50 euros. I have 142. Uh, and I got 105 to trade with. Way to go, Splare. It's coming. Uh, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, that, that, that lamp reminds me of the song by ACDC, Fat Bottom Girls. Has quite the caboose. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, <laughs> okay. Um, Splare, you have a good night, buddy. Take care and thank you. For being here as always uh, <laughs> so uh fool of a took says i sold a gamestop 25 february 2023 for six dollars uh right on uh it's in the money a dollar a dollar a ten or so and he brought in six bucks uh that's a nice right um alex there were uh, there were some nervous uh, nancy's appearing at the close there interesting there were Hector, uh, Uncle Bruce, I'm here. You can begin now. Thank you, Hector. Uh, we'll start the show right now. Welcome, everybody, to the program. It's great to have you here. Uh, uh, we ended up down 200 points on the day. Okay, well, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night, everyone. It was great seeing you. Uh, Hector, you you missed nothing. Um, Cindy, isn't that queen? Uh, fat bottom girls. Uh, DQ, Hector, and Bertie are related. Mind blown. <laughs> my mind is blown. Oh, my gosh. Well, we have a down day today uh, with losses accelerating after several up days in a row. We had a down day today. And th this gets interesting because so we were as high today as uh, on the Dow. We got up to 33,964. We ended up at 33,536. So we gave up 300, 400. And 30 points. That's how much the market backed off today. 400 from three in the afternoon. No, no, from one in the afternoon to four in the afternoon. So in the last three hours, the market gave up over 400 points on the Dow to go negative, and it was accelerating at the end, going down faster. Sets up a very interesting morning opening for tomorrow morning. Uh, as I said, I, I'm now expecting the market to begin reacting to lower earnings ex expectation uh, estimates. That's the next game in town that is going to start to show up. And uh, uh, this market is going to think, you know, these market players are going to go, wait a minute, uh, these shares can't trade where they are. They're going to have to be lower than where they are. Um, we're overpriced with what we know is coming. We know for a fact that we're going to have a, a, um, a slowdown on the economy and a pullback on earnings. And so these shares are going to have to, uh, you know, you're going to have to reflect them. And when Amazon announces 10,000 layoffs, do you think it's because they're making nothing but money? No, it's to stem losses. It's to stem the bleeding and so out go the out go the personnel, and we have a cutback. We have a smaller company all of a sudden. I mean, ten thousand people. I mean, how many companies are big companies that have ten thousand people working for them? These guys are letting go ten thousand people. I mean, this is serious stuff. Um, we gotta we gotta pay attention to that. Um, the, the 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 Amazon stock is only down two thirty a share. <laughs> It's not reacting yet. Uh, it hasn't sunk in. That's my hunch. It just hasn't sunk in to people that, oh, my gosh, what's going on? Can you feel the momentum shifting? Uh, um, let's see. Uh, S&P crossed 4,000. It felt to me like it wanted to cross that line, and then it wanted to take profit. So we're at 39.57 now. We're not over that anymore. Uh, Alex, Coyote, I can feel it in my bones, Jerry. I can feel it in my bones. Brian. Coyote, ouch, that is embarrassing. It will be, I will be canceling my subscription now. <laughs> I don't know what this is about. Uh, what else is going on? Um, he also asked who made who. Ah, Bama Bay DQ, maybe just a little, but I knew some of my stocks would not stay at this high level. Alex Coyote, um, on guest vocals, uh, Freddie, on guest vocals for ACDC, I'd, I'd have loved to see that. 
DQ, Obama, I, if not, I'm not judging, but I've been short selling stocks, so I'm even more of a gambler. Bama babe, DQ, no risk, no reward. There you go. Exactly. Bama babe, you got it. <laughs> oh, it's going to be a fun day tomorrow, isn't it, kids? Oh, yes, indeed. Join me tomorrow morning uh, for the pre-alert, uh, pre, pre-trade alert uh, stuff for Gold Bagel members. And then 830, I'll see the rest of you there, and we'll get going, see what's going on. Uh, should be a ton of fun. Mirko, did anyone see that NFL game out of Munich? Uh, that was exciting. The crowd was really into it. We did watch some of it. That was kind of neat to watch. I go to I admit I bought puts also Friday and today. Uh, and shorting and shorting OFC. Uh, Boris VIX moved almost five percent up. Stocks only down one percent. Yeah, the VIX uh, one point one one higher. So we'll see if that climbs tomorrow in the pre market. Uh, Bama Babe Coyote, join the Gambler Club. There you go. All right, folks. Uh, thank you. Uh, Alberto Bagel Familia, have a great night and see you all on Discord. I can't wait for the Wednesday Bagel Show. Let's go. Thank you, Alberto. Have a good one, my friend. The premium, Mr. Premium, the I did a little gambling in Biloxi this weekend. Uh, Mirko, the, 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 he kept singing 45 minutes after the game was over. They were still singing. Alex, uh, gonna dash. See you all tomorrow. Let's hope there's blood in the water. Exactly. <laughs> we'll see how it goes. I will we'll be here to watch it. Uh, thank you, everybody. A uh, special shout out to uh, Beach Boy. Thank you, my friend, as always. Uh, you guys have a great uh, evening out there. Um, Mirko, nice to see Seattle lose. Uh, we'll see you guys tomorrow. Uh, have a nice evening, Boris. Thank you very much. All of you uh, stay well. I got to do two more shows tonight on my other channel. So I'm going to get to work over there. I will see you folks tomorrow right here, bright and early. And let's make some money tomorrow because uh, it sure looks like we have some momentum going here. Okay, everybody, take care. We'll see you later. Bye for now.